21 states face a double-digit budget deficit in 2010. We know that North Dakota is not one of those. But there is one state, California, that is looking at the biggest problem, a $24 billion deficit in addition to uh, what we mentioned earlier, which was one of the highest, not the highest, but one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. Joining us now on set, the former governor of California, currently counsel at Loeb & Loeb uh, law firm, Gray Davis. Governor Davis, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Now, there are so many questions that, that I have for you first, but um, it... it how did California get into this situation? I mean, obviously, it was a long time in the making, but if you had to say, what was the main reason? I think there's two. One is attitudinal. You've been out to California. All things are possible. They're great success stories. So City on a hill. <laughs> so we tend to believe government can do everything. Mm -hmm. But government can do everything in good times, but it can't do everything in bad times. Second problem is structural. One of only three states that require a two-thirds vote. So you have to get Republicans who want to reduce taxes in good times and Democrats who want to spend more money in good times. It's kind of crazy, but you're reducing expenditures and you're increasing spending in order to get a two-thirds vote. So I would change two things. I would make the, uh, the uh, threshold to pass a budget a majority, 50 percent, like mm -hmm. 47 other states in the Congress. Right. And I would put in a rainy day fund, yep. which would say, you know, 10 or 15 percent of the money off the top goes into a fund until it maybe gets to be 20 percent of the total budget, and that can only be used the next time you're in a recession. Now, here's my question with that, and, and again, I, I, I've spent time out there. I love California, but I, 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 and I'm, whenever time I'm out there on the highway, I see signs to vote for or against some proposition. And this system seems to be problematic, because even if you got a rainy day fund, then people could always say, oh, there's money in the fund. I don't want to pay uh, as much uh, parking in parking tickets. So they can go and have a proposition, and all of a sudden, uh, those fees go down. So people seem to have the right to vote for every little thing, and that ends up with more spending and lower taxes, sort of definitionally. Yeah, you're partially right. But I can just tell you one thing for sure. People are not going to give up their right to the initiative process. They have the first say and they have the last say and that's the way they like it. And you said this this proposition system goes back to how, how 1911. long? Ago? 1911. 1911 the railroads were supposedly corrupting the legislation, the people got tired of it and they passed the initiative and the referendum and the recall process and they're not giving those things up. Well you'd have to use a proposition to do it and nobody would vote to give it up, right? Okay. So so how do you get around that problem? I don't think you do get around it, but I do think People make choices in their life. When you go shopping, you don't buy everything in the supermarket. When you go and order a meal, you don't buy everything, order everything on the menu. But somehow we expect government to do all things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think this, this current uh, challenge will force people to realize we have to make choices in government like we do in our lives. We can probably finance 94, 95 percent of what we're doing and do it very well. But doing 100 percent, we can't do. Is there some fundamental change California could consider in terms of its tax structure, whether that be how it handles yes. property tax or income tax? Yes. Actually, I think the sales tax is the most dependable tax. Fifty percent of our income tax comes from the top one percent. And they pay us a lot of money mm -hmm. when the market is doing well and real estate is doing well, neither of which are happening right now. Mm -hmm. So that's a very volatile tax. But the sales tax is very predictable. And I think you'll see Governor Schwarzenegger's tax commission come back and recommend that the sales tax be lowered and widened, meaning that law firms, accounting firms, when you go to get your any service, when you go to get your car repaired, all that would be subject to a sales tax. And I think that will be a much more dependable uh, revenue source that will even out the ups and downs we experience. Now, one of the things, just looking at some of the reports out of the Capital Weekly, uh, which is just basically a, a California-based publication right. that focuses on um, what's going on in Sacramento, uh, talks about where the increase has come from. And they do say a lot of the spending is due to uh, inflation and population growth. Uh, but there's been a couple of specific things that may shock people not from California. One of them is a vehicle license fee. Prop, people didn't want to pay it. Right. And uh, so to save about $200 a person, they got rid of, uh, it, it went a lot lower. And that's costing California between 4 and $6 billion a year. Those are the little things. Well, let, me tell you, up. let me tell you what happened. I was the first governor ever to lower the vehicle license fee because the Republicans in good times wanted taxes lowered. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after four straight years of lowering it, I had to raise it my final year and people said, hasta la vista. We don't want you governor anymore. So uh, I know the difficulty of taking something back from people. 
I do believe we can straighten this out if we have a 50 percent uh, threshold to pass the budget. If you don't like what the party How do you change that 50 percent? Again, you have to go to the people. But there have been polls. The oh, no, we go back to the prop. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not sure people would lower the threshold to raise taxes. They might lower that to 60 percent or maybe 55 percent. But I don't think they'll lower it to 50 percent. But four out of five years, we're not raising taxes. And we spend more money mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you have to give the minority party something in the way of reducing taxes or swimming pools in their district to get their vote. So it costs you more money mm -hmm. to have a two-thirds vote requirement in most years. So think, I think they'll yeah. go along with reducing the threshold to 50 percent. Do you think that the government's going to go ahead and pretty much formally back all of California's outstanding obligations and, and put that, that guarantee in there, which, by the way, does upset people in other states like North Dakota, where they feel like they've done everything right and now they're somehow on the hook for uh, some poor decisions made in California? Yeah, and I, I can understand where they're coming from. Uh, but I think states which have high unemployment rates can make a legitimate case to the federal government. Uh, you know, it's in the national interest that uh, these states not mm -hmm. suffer anymore. And can you guarantee 30 percent, 50 percent of our bonds, something to give us uh, more credibility when we go to the market? I don't think that is unreasonable. So who, uh, who's going to be the next governor of California? Well, it's either going to be uh, Jerry Brown, Gavin Newsom, uh, Mayor Viragosa on the Democratic side, mm -hmm. or. Meg Whitman or Steve Poisner on the uh, Republican side. Now, Meg Whitman obviously is a well-known quantity to all of our viewers, obviously, right. for, for right. obvious reasons. Uh, do you think she'd be a good governor? Uh, you know, she may be. I know her. Uh, she's a good person. Uh, outsiders have not had a great track record at winning in California or, mm -hmm. or governing that effectively. Uh, people like to say it's like running a business, but if it was, the government you wouldn't would, have the props. Government, <laughs> would, government would run more efficiently. Yes. Um, but. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, pe people tend to change. And after a Republican governor, I think they'll be looking for a change. So I think the Democrats have a better chance in 2010. All right. Well, Governor Gray Davis, thanks very much for coming Thank in you. and talking to us. We appreciate it. My and pleasure. I think uh, 1911, huh? But don't Goes give back up. to 1911. They're never going to give that up. So yeah, just, I, I know. I, I'm, just, I'm resigning myself. I, I tried, but uh, you I actually think, uh, by and large, uh, they make good choices. All right. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Let us know what you think, by the way. Would you want a proposition system in your state? And do you think it's fair or unfair to blame it for part or more than part of California's current duress? Let us know. Street Signs at CNBC.com. And next, Jim Cramer here with his.